You have to realize what's more important in your life. So it was, um, that was a great analogy to Now, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit starts to move in your life. You understand? Faith. This is the understanding of a true believer. Repentance is the key. It's part of the keys. But it's up to you. Everything revolves around a decision. Satan attacks our identity. If we true believers, he will attack who you are. Continue to sow. Sow the word of God where Christ sit it. This is the direction God wants you to shift in. Always remember this. God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Shalom, peace be unto you. Today, on the Way of Holiness broadcast, there comes a time when a believer comes to the conclusion that they must live by the Word of God. But more importantly, activate the power of the Word of God in their life. To live in the Word of God is to live in power and authority. The enemy does not want you to understand and operate in the powerful spiritual realm. Take time out to increase your prayer life and seek God with all diligence. To operate in the power of God. And the power of God is the Word of God, Jesus Christ. Join us as Bishop Marlon Curtis brings us the Bible study lesson. More prayer, more power. Shalom, peace be unto you, viewer supporters. I appreciate you, love you very, very much. We thank God for those that are listening and watching over in Europe. We thank God for those that are listening and watching here in the States and everywhere in between. I appreciate you, love you very, very much. And I thank God for those that are listening and viewing locally. We thank God for Myrtle Beach. We thank God for... North Myrtle Beach. We thank God for Conway. We thank God for Georgetown. We thank God for the local areas that are tuned in. We appreciate you. Love you very, very much. I want to get back into our series. More prayer, more power. Part four. More prayer, more power. Part four. We want to get into this lesson for tonight. Son, can you turn me down just a little bit, please? Our lesson for tonight. If you're taking notes, write this down. If you're taking notes, write this down. Greater works are your predestination. Greater works are your predestination. You were predestined to do greater works before the foundation of the world. Don't wait. Move forward. Continue to move forward in your greater works. You're going to get into it. We're going into the book of John, chapter 14. John, chapter 14, verse 12. John, chapter 14, verse 12. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. You may have your seats. Saints of God. If you are a true believer, greater works shall you do. Now, there's stipulations to that. Greater works shall you do. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? This world is going to slow you down. I want y'all to hear me. This world is going to slow you down. People in this world are going to slow you down. Things of this world, if you're not careful, these things will slow you down, get into your mindset, and cause malfunctions spiritually. Saints of God, get your mind, take your mind in heavenly places. This world will slow you down if you let it. People will say things. Let me tell you something, how the devil works. The enemy will whisper something to a co-worker, something to someone out in the street, something to a family member. And unfortunately, if, if, if one of the members of the church is not right, the devil will get into that person and whisper something to cause you to go left instead of right. The only way, saints of God, that you're going to achieve greater works is through a made-up mind. You have to have a made-up mind. Saints of God, test yourself. Find out where you at. There could be a party you still whirling. There could be a part of you still operating concerning flesh issues. It could be a part of you that's, that still want friends. I need a friend. I want a friend. And cause you to lose out from the spiritual things of God. Listen to what the word says in John 14, John chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Hold it right there. Verily, verily, I say. Jesus Christ is teaching. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Not the world. Not the things of the world. Not the situations of the world. Not your bills, not your problems, not things that's going to cause you to go backwards instead of forward. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Remember now, belief is not just a surface belief, but belief or believing has many levels. Believing has many levels. Many levels of belief will take you higher into the realms of God to do greater things. But remember now, believing or belief operates with faith. You have to have both connected together 
operating the same time. Without levels of belief, you will not get to where God wants you to be. Listen to how Jesus Christ is, is, is teaching here. Verily, verily. Go ahead, son. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Now, I want to stay right there with believe. I want to stay right there with believe. Notice what the word is saying. Jesus said, you have to believe. And not just believe, but believe in him. In other words, do you truly believe that Jesus Christ lives in you? If you know that Jesus Christ is living in you, then your believing level will ascend and go higher. But it's truly a made-up mind in Christ. If you're taking notes, write that down. I must have a made-up mind in Christ. This is how you're going to believe. This is how you're going to go further. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. All right? If you're taking notes, write this down. Greater things of and from God you are of. Remember that greater things of and from God, you are of him. And now a spiritual product. So you were created by the most high God, Yahweh, to do great things. You were predestined to go higher in your belief. But the question is, if your belief is not growing, if your faith is not growing, how can you do greater things? I want you to realize this. How can you do greater things if you're just surfacing your believing in the word of God? In Christ Jesus. We have to go beyond the surface. And go higher. And elevate in our belief. This is how you're going to operate in the greater works. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. You have to believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior. And not only your Savior, but he is the greater works. So I want you to notice what the word is saying here. Let's go in Ephesians. If you take notes, write this down. Let's go in Ephesians 1 and 11 really quick. If you're taking notes, write this down. Investigate, believe. You've got to investigate your belief. All right? Ephesians. I'm going into the book of Ephesians 1 and 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Notice what the word of God is saying. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. If you surrendered to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and asked him to come into your life, this is your inheritance. Salvation is your inheritance when you believe. Jesus Christ is now living inside of you. Should not 
we be doing greater works? Amen? Jesus Christ is living inside of you. You should be operating in greater works. When Jesus walked the water, Peter said, bid me to come, Jesus. Jesus said, come. Now, notice what, what Jesus said to him. One word, come. God is saying to us, he's saying to the church, come up. Peter took the advice and said, I'm coming. Got out the boat and walked on the water. But something happened. If you truly believe, saints of God, people of God, believers, you'll walk on the water of the word. In other words, Jesus was showing Peter the miracle of walking on water, but it would be better to walk on the word. Notice what the word is saying now. It's not about just going to the ocean and walking on the water. What is that going to do? But walking on the word, the water of the word, it'll produce greater works. I want you to get this. Production is who you are now. It's not about you just coming to church. We have to ascend into the hill of the Lord. And when you ascend, you must believe. The greater works is in the heavenly places. But you have to get there with a made up mind in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Your inheritance is in the heavenly realms. To get there, you must not only believe, but you must believe in greater levels. You must climb the ladder of belief. If you take notes, write that down. I must climb the ladder of belief or believing. Scripture says, greater works shall you do. But you have to have the greater works in a made-up mind. If you take a note, write that down. I must have the greater works and operate in greater works in a made-up mind. In whom also we have obtain an inheritance. Remember that. It is not just obtaining heaven for eternal life. We're talking about now. Ascending into the hill of the Lord so you can do what? Greater things. When Moses came down from the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. They didn't know what happened to Moses. But he came down. And let me share something with you. He didn't do anything yet. But the greater works was shining on his face. They said, Moses, put a cover on your face. Put a veil on your face. You shine like the noonday sun. Greater works shall you do. But to those that believe. I've seen people in church over 30, 40 years sitting in that same chair, believing the same scripture, but no works. 
No works. Saints of God, don't you want to change? Don't you want to do greater things? But it's up to you. Remember now, everything starts at a point, a certain point. That's where we at. You've got to be tired and sick and tired of the same old thing. I want to see greater works. And Jesus said it's going to come through who? You. The word said it's going to come through what? You. So every day I want you to point to yourself and say greater works shall I do. Make it personal. Greater work shall I do. We're not talking about your job. We're talking about this spiritual job. We're talking about going further. When you get home and you start praying, say, God, greater work shall I do through Christ Jesus. Some people, some people say that and then go right to the table and start, start feeding their mouth. Nothing wrong with eating. But that's all the greater works that they can do is sit there and eat. But can't do nothing else for God. They go out and drive their car, wax and polish their car, but won't say nothing to nobody about Christ. No, you have your reward. There's nothing wrong with a beautiful, shiny car, but if that's all the work you got, shame on you. Saints of God, we have an inheritance. The devil wanted you blind to this for many years. Make you think, oh, my inheritance is this having a good old time in heaven when I leave here. He don't want you to know the power that you possess. He don't want you to know the power that is in your inheritance. He don't want you to get to the heavenly realms. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated, according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. I want you to get this. You are predestinated. You take notes, write that down. I want you to write this down first. Write this down first. I have an inheritance in the heavenly realm. I am predestinated before the foundation of the world. That's number two. And I am according, I am according to God's purpose and will. I want you to write these things down. I am according to the purpose of God's will. Now, saints of God, when you get this in your mindset and you operate on this every day, you're going to find yourself operating differently in the spiritual realm. You're going to find yourself operating, doing things, in a greater way. Now, greater works shall you do, it says ye do, you do, is not necessarily now. Everybody don't have the same gifts, but they can have it. I want y'all to hear me. It's how bad you want it. This is, this is where the church has been bamboozled. 
have been tricked, have been lied to. You can have it, but how bad do you really want it? How bad are you going to sacrifice? How bad are you going to be what God had called you to be? How bad do you want it? You can have it. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people in wheelchairs can't walk no more or can't walk. And you're the body of Christ. What you going to do? Walk past them and just say, I'm going to pray for them? It's time now. Put your mind in heavenly places. Act like you know and start moving and understanding what God wants out your life. Is to take that person by the hand and say, Come on, let's walk. That's right. Talitha Kumi, arise. Saints of God, flame on. Do you hear the Holy Spirit? Saints of God, flame on. Not flame off. If you allow this world, I see we're not going to finish. <laughs> <laughs> but if you allow this world to tickle you, if you allow this world to lie to you, if you allow this world to tell you you can't do it, shame on you. God gave us the blueprint. God gave us the word of God is the blueprint to rise up to the occasion. Remember now, you, you have an inheritance. You were predestinated before the foundation of the world. And you are according to God's purpose and will. I hope you wrote them down. All right. Let's go to Romans 8, 29 and 30. Romans 8. Let me get there for a minute. Let me get there. Romans 8, Romans chapter 8. And we're going to go into the 29th verse. And watch this now. Listen to what the word is saying. For whom he did foreknow. So he knew you before the foundation of the world. He knew you before you entered your mother's womb. He knew who you are. He knows who you are. But the question is, do you know who you are? Don't walk around here like the world. The world walks around doing whatever the world wants to do. But a true believer walks in the power of God. And he or she causes friction, causes fire causes things to happen. When you speak, things happen out of the spiritual realm. When, when something you want done, okay, I'm going I'm to loose it up. I'm going to loose things in the spirit realm. And then when I don't want something to happen, then I'm going to bind it up. Greater works shall you do. But you have to want it. Saints of God, you have to want it. Raise your hand if you're diligently or diligent getting up in the morning to go to work. Raise your hand. The whole church. I got to raise my hand because I got to go to work. Who's diligent in getting up, taking a shower, bath, whatever you do to get clean and go to work? 
God want the same thing. No excuses. God want the same thing. Now, you get up and say your prayers, but is that all that you do? People, thousands and thousands and thousands of people walking in diseases. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people walk, uh, 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 walking with canes, wheelchair bound. All kind of different things that are happening on this earth now. Remember, God made us the head, not the tail. Why is the church the tail? Can anybody answer that question? Why is the church the tail? If the church is not the tail. Very good. Unbelief. That's why many churches are the tail. And I'm not talking about the four walls of the church. I'm talking about the people. The devil wants you to be the tail of things. He don't want you to be the head in things of God. The devil really want the church on a leash. Like walking the dog. Because the leash has what? Control. That's what the devil wants. And the devil has many churches on a leash. Don't let it be you. We're not going to have that here. Don't let it be you. On a devil leash. Or on a demon leash. Saints of God break through to do greater things. Break through to do greater things. It is not about a greater house, nor a greater car, nor a greater job. It's about greater things in the purpose and will of God. Read verse 29 again. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. All right. So I'm going to slow this down for a minute. I'm going to go to read it too. We're going into John chapter 14. We're going to read it too. John chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. But take your time. I assure you, the most solemnly say to you, anyone who believes in me as Savior will also do the things that I do. Notice what the word is saying. Those that believe what? In me as Savior. As Savior. So in other words, you have to be serious about your salvation. You have to believe that Jesus Christ is now living in you. You have to believe that Jesus Christ want to work inside of you. And you have to let Jesus Christ echo the words inside of you. Greater works shall ye do. Greater works shall you do. You got to let Jesus Christ echo the Holy Spirit echo inside of you. God wants you to move miraculously. God wants you to look at cancer. And call the word out and it disappeared. Many don't believe in the miraculous no more. Why? Because there's no more faith. The heavenly realm is waiting on you to visit the heavenly realm to empower you. Who's empowering you?
The word is power. The word of God is power. But if you just read the pages, you're in trouble. You have to go where the power is. But first, you have to have a made up mind. Then you have to believe and faith is connected to belief and you're on your way. Prayer. Remember now, our, our, our series is more prayer, more power. This is what we're talking about. Prayer is the elevator that's going to take you into the heavenly realm. But you have to believe in prayer. You have to wear prayer. And you got to walk in prayer. You have to believe in prayer. You have to wear prayer. You have to walk in prayer. God don't make you do nothing. But it's up to you that want to do it. Who is going to be one of God's tools? You got to point to yourself and say, me. Me. Me, 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 me. <laughs> You got, to, you got to say, me. Yes, you could look at your brother and sister and say, God, use her, use him. But God, don't forget me. God, it's not about me, but I want to be me in you. I want to operate. Jesus said, greater work shall you do. When people see things or look at things or know things that they can't understand, they, they, they tend to back up. They tend to back up. When you are connected to the word of God, you find yourself going toward the word. You find yourself operating in the word. You find yourself, when you operate in the word, the power of the most high God start moving. I want to see the pews Move in power. The pulpit is going to operate in power, but I want to see the pews operate in power. Who with me? Who with me? Well, saints of God, <laughs> if you mean that, then you better say it like you mean it. Are you with me? Right. You got to say it like you mean it. Listen, don't fake this thing. You got to say things like you mean it. If you don't operate in God's true power, who fault is it? It's your fault. Remember what the word is saying here. All right. We would we we read it to you finish? All right, go ahead and finish. Anyone who believes in me as savior will also do the things that I do. Notice what the word is saying. Who believes in Jesus Christ as savior, he or she will do the things that I do. Is that what it said? It's all right. He just feeling the power. And not just a little cry. The babies is feeling the power. Remember saying to God, I, I love to plant seed. 
even if the child is crying for milk. But you're still plant seed. Remember that. That child going to grow up mighty in the Lord. I already know that. Little Ezekiel, little prophet Ezekiel, he's going to grow up in the power of the Lord. You, got, you have to believe in whom you serve. All right? Finish up. Read it too. And he will do even greater things than these in extent and outreach because I am going to the Father. Notice what the word is saying. Jesus is, is teaching about you. And he's saying greater things shall you do because he has to go back to the Father. So in other words, he's not just taking the greater works, he's leaving the greater works. And we have been predestinated to walk and to live and to operate in the greater works. So every day, greater works shall I do. You got to make it personal. Greater works shall I do. You say that every day and watch what happens. You say this every day and watch what happens. Speak over your family. Speak over your job. Speak over your life. Speak into the atmosphere. Charge things. Flame on, saints of God. Flame on. Flame on. Don't sit there and just read the pages. Become the pages. Become the word of God. Every day say, greater works shall I do. Until you feel it. I want y'all to hear this. When you pray, you got to pray till you feel it. Then when you feel it, then the power take you over. Rambo Korea Bahaya. Renderebeshe Korea Bahaya. Yes, Lord. Randa Basha Hondu Yamoko. That's right. You got to speak until something happens. I feel the fire of God right now. Let me tell you something. Raboko, Riana Masia, Noboko, Ria Bahaya. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We're going to walk in the bonus. It ain't how loud you get, it's how powerful you are. Always remember that. Not about how loud you can get. I remember back in my early days ministering, I got, I got loud. I wanted, I wanted to be seen. Holy Spirit said, it's, it's not in how, you, how loud you get. It's through me, the power that you need to display. Holy Spirit will teach you and guide you into all truth. Yes, you can get loud, but are you powerful loud? It's not just saying something loud. Flame on. That's right, Sister Sharon. Flame on. You Listen, the flame has taken you over. Church, you got to let the flame of God, the Holy Spirit, take you over. This is how. This is how you walk in greater Works. All right. Finish reader two. All right. So we, we're, we're, yes, 13 and 14. You can go ahead. And I will do whatever you ask in my name as my representative. This I will do so that the Father may be glorified and celebrated in the Son. You know why that's happening? Because you dedicated yourself in Jesus. When you dedicate yourself in Jesus, Jesus Christ, you start becoming the product. When you become the product, then the ingredients start to work. When the ingredients is in the product, 
then the power starts to take over. Flame on, saints. Flame on, daughter. It's going to be all right. You watch. You are predestinated for greater works. Remember what the lesson is tonight. Greater works are your predestination. All right. All right, we're going to stop there. We're going to go back into Romans chapter 8. We're going to read 29 and 30 really quick. We're not going to get done tonight. But we're going to go into one more of this scripture, one more scripture after this. Go ahead. Romans chapter 8, verse 29 and 30. Read a one. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. This is getting powerful, more powerful. Notice what the word is saying. Moreover, whom he did predestinate. You were before the foundation of the world. You were in heavenly places getting charged up. You were, you were not only getting charged up, but charged up with power. I want y'all to hear this. So the word says, moreover, whom he did predestinate. Go ahead. Then Them he also called. He called you. He has called you to power. He has called you to heavenly places. He has called you into heavenly realms. He has called you into heavenly dimensions. He has called you to live with him. He has called you to live in the power. And not only live in the power, but walk in the power. The power and the authority. God want to take you into where the word is at. Not just the pages. You want to take you where the word is at. And then you're sitting in the classroom of God. But you have to want it. You have to want it. When Jesus said to the disciples, who do they say that I am? Well, some of the disciples were surface. Master, uh, uh, they, they, they call you Elijah or Elijah. They called you Elijah. They called you, uh, uh, what was that? Yes, they called him teacher. <laughs> now, notice some of the disciples were surface. Peter was in heavenly realm. See, he allowed his mind to live further than some of the other disciples. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. But my father, watch this. My father that is in heaven. You have to put yourself in heavenly places. Peter started to understand that I, I, I have to go further. I can't just stay in one spot. Notice the years that you have been saved. Not so much be ashamed of some things, but get tired and sick and tired of the old stuff. When you come into the knowledge of truth, the scripture says what? Walk therein. So it's time now. 
saints of God, don't let the world weigh you down. Don't let people weigh you down. Don't let family weigh you down. Don't let the job weigh you down. Don't let bills weigh you down. Don't let your dog and cat weigh you down. <laughs> you know I got to throw something else in there, right? Don't allow it to happen. God wants you to ascend. To do what? God wants you to ascend. To do what? I'm going to say it one more time. I want to hear power and demonstration. What are you here to do what? Flame on. All right, read it too, really quick. For those whom he foreknew and loved and chose beforehand, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. See that? And ultimately share in his complete sanctification. You see that? So that he would be the firstborn, the most beloved and honored among many believers. Not many walk in the power of God. Not many go into the heavenly realm. Only a few that has the connection. Remember, saints of God, you are the eternal spiritual extension cord connected to Jesus. Jesus is the power source. And remember this, prayer is the elevator that's going to take you into higher things, take you into the heavenly realm, take you into the heavenly place. Saints of God, have you... Read it too. Have you finished? All right. Let's, let's, let's move on really quick. And those who he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified, which is declared free of the guilt of sin. And those whom he justified, he also glorified, which is raising them to a heavenly dignity. Notice, notice your position. Justify and glorify. I want you to write that down. My spiritual position through Christ. Listen to what he says. And whom he called, them he also, that's you, saints of God, that is you, justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. In other words, it's only through Christ, it's only through prayer, it is only, listen, remember, prayer is the elevator that's going to take you in to who you are. I want you to remember that. Prayer, diligent prayer, fasting and praying prayer. Remember, believing has many different levels. You must climb the ladder of belief, climb the ladder of faith to get to who you need to be. Saints of God, those that have been listening, I appreciate you. Love you very, very much. I thank God for what God has said tonight. Remember now, I'm just the vessel. God is the teacher. Just the vessel. God is the teacher. I learn from him. The Holy Spirit shares things with me. So remember these things, saints of God. We'll get into part five of it next week. Those that have been listening. Those that have been listening. It's time now. It's time to make that change. Change beginning in the mindset. Change begins with the mindset. 
And the mindset says, what? I must make a decision. Everything revolves around a decision. Make Jesus your decision tonight. Some of you may not wake up tomorrow morning. Did you hear what the Holy Spirit said to you? Some of you out there may not wake up tomorrow morning. Make Jesus Christ your Savior right now. Those that have been listening, make Jesus Christ your Savior. And how do you make Jesus Christ your Savior? Repentance is the key. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. And when you ask God to forgive you of your sins and mean it from the heart and the mind and the mind and the heart become one, then Jesus Christ will come running to do what? Save you. What does Acts 2.38 say? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Notice what the Word of God is saying. Repentance is the key. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. And don't go backwards. Go forward. And when you do that, Jesus Christ will come running to save you. Baptism is being baptized in water, going underneath that water, being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, coming up a new person in Christ. Then Ephesians 1.13, one, Ephesians 1.13 comes into action. The Holy Spirit comes and seals you up. Living that life, the Holy Spirit, you and the Holy Spirit become one. You start to understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and you and the Holy Spirit become one. To do what? To do what? To do what? To do greater works. I want you to remember that. And the gift of the Holy Spirit starts to move and come up and give you that heavenly language. And you and the Holy Spirit become one. Saints of God, I appreciate you, love you very, very, very much. But I always want you to remember this. God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Shalom, peace be unto you. Thank you for tuning in to the Way of Holiness broadcast. We hope that the message was well received and that it has brought you closer to God. Our contact details are displayed for you on the screen. Thank you for your continued support. We look forward to sharing with you. So until next time, God bless.